Whether you sell print-on-demand products in an Etsy shop, a Shopify store, on Redbubble, one of the challenges you've most likely faced is finding a good source of high-quality, professional-looking graphics. However, I recently learned about a new service called Kittle. It's an online service specifically designed to allow you to create customized, professional-looking graphics for commercial use. There are hundreds of templates to choose from, or you can build something from scratch using their elements and fonts. All fast and easy with the commercial rights that you need. So stick around and let's take a look at how you can use Kittle to create designs for your print-on-demand business. Hey everybody, Jeff here for POD Insights, the YouTube channel and podcast. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at POD underscore insights. And while we're thinking about it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get notified of future POD Insights videos. Before we dive into this, I want to mention that Kittle did sponsor this video. However, I will be giving you my honest opinion of whether I think Kittle is a service that you should consider as a print-on-demand seller. All right, so today we are talking about a new graphic design service specifically targeted at commercial use. And it is, well, it's been around for a little bit, but I certainly didn't know about it until within the last month or so. I've seen a little bit of information about it, but today we're going to dive in and talk all about what this service offers. So what makes Kittle different is how much you can customize their graphics. They have templates that you can use as well as creating your own graphic from scratch using their elements and fonts. And the tools and the ways that you can adjust these designs just goes far beyond what you can do with a tool like Canva. So let's walk through what these features are and you'll see just how easy it is to create or customize these designs. First of all, you'll have to create an account with Kittle and they do have a free account. There are limitations to what you can do with the designs and the types of files that you can download with the completely free account, but you can create a free account and get in there and use their design templates or create your own designs and just see how it all works and decide if it will actually work for you with your print on demand business before you go for one of the paid accounts. So once you create an account and log in, you'll have the ability to search or browse all of the templates that they offer, and then you can select a template to use, and that's what we're gonna start with. Right on the main login page, you'll see all of their templates, which have different categories. You can create logos using their templates. You can create labels, t-shirts, posters, cards, and social media posts. So there are multiple uses for Kittle. It's not just all about creating designs that you would use on t-shirts or apparel or other print-on-demand products. You can also create social media posts and logos for your brand. But let's take a look at some of the t-shirt templates that are here. There are a lot of different templates available that kind of follow very classic print-on-demand styles, such as the sort of vintage sunset style graphic here, this tropical sunset one. We're gonna use that one in just a second, but let's just take a look at what some of these are. Now, there are hundreds of templates here available. Every single piece of these templates that you see, every element of the designs is something that you can edit right here in Kittle's online interface. You don't have to download it and then manipulate it in different software. So let's say that we're looking for a beach theme design and we want a nice professional looking graphic and we just wanna create it for the name of a beach town that we found is not trademarked and we think there's good demand for. So this tropical sunset one looks pretty good. However, the beach that I am thinking of is more of an East Coast beach. It's not gonna have palm trees or anything in it, but that doesn't mean we can't use this template. So let's click on this template and then let's select use this design. This is going to open up a new project for you, which is basically just a new file. Now, one thing you're gonna to wanna to do first, if you are creating this for a t-shirt, is go to the settings gear and then change the artboard size or dimensions. The artboard is just basically the canvas that you're working on, and you can change it to custom dimensions. Now, this one is preset to millimeters. We're gonna change it to pixels, and then we're gonna change this to the size that we want. So we'll change those dimensions and then hit confirm, and that's going to make our artboard much bigger and the graphic much smaller. So we need to scale that graphic up. Just click and drag to select all the elements of that design template and then drag to maximize the size of your new artboard. And now we're ready to edit. So what we don't want, I don't really want these palm trees in here because this design I'm thinking of or the one that I've sort of discovered I want to create is going to be the name of a beach that's more East Coast or New England kind of in the United States. 
Those beaches don't have palm trees, so I want to replace those with something else. So all I have to do is click on anywhere in the design, and then I'm going to ungroup. And to do that, I'm just going to right-click and go to ungroup. So that ungroups all these individual elements. Now I can click on the individual palm trees and just delete them. And I'm going to look for an element to replace that's more fitting for the type of beach design that I'm making. To do that, I'm going to look over on the left side of the screen, where you've got your little tray of different commands. And so if you mouse over to that, you'll see my projects designs, text, elements, uploads, photos, and textures. So what we're going to do is go to elements. And then for this one, I'm thinking a nice lighthouse might be nice. So I'm going to search for lighthouse. I'm thinking I might like this one here. However, as you can see, it doesn't really fit the theme of the rest of this design. I'm going to cover up this small item here that might have been a lighthouse. And so how am I going to blend this in with this design with and make it look like it fits. All I'm going to do is come over to the right side of the screen. I'm going to select the object colors. So first I'll select this kind of brownish color and that pops out a color selector. It also gives you a very helpful little menu at the bottom to show you what colors are already present in the document. Now I just want this to be a silhouette. So I'm going to change it to black and I'm going to do the same thing for the other fill color. And now we have a silhouette of a lighthouse instead of a full detailed drawing. So let's select our text here and I, I'm just going to get rid of this really huge one. I'm going to stick with the this one to use. And what I want to do for this design is just curve the text so it goes around the top of the sunset. And to do that, first I'm just going to edit the text. And now I'm just going to come over here again to the right side where all of my editing tools are. Let me actually disappear for a second so you can see more of it. All right, there you go. So now you can see more of the editing features over here on the right. I'm going to select the circle option. So I'm just going to grab the path and drag until the shape of that curve matches the circle. Then I'm gonna move it down, get it a little bit closer until it looks like it's right where I want it. There we go. Now here's another adjustment you can make. You can change the, the letter spacing. So if I want this to be spaced out a little bit more, now I'm gonna get rid of this bottom text and I'm gonna bring this smaller text up in here. All right, there we go. And I'm done. This is the design that I had pictured in my head that I wanted to create. Now we're ready to export it. So to download this, all we need to do is come over here to the download in the top right corner, click on that. And this is where we have more control over the file export. So what you're going to want to do is take a look at the DPI field and change that to 300. Once we do that, it does alter the dimensions just a little bit. So go ahead and change it back to what you wanted there. So now we're good. We got 300 DPI with the right size. We can go ahead and download this as a PNG or if you have one of the paid accounts, you can also export this as an SVG. So if you're using a platform like Printify for your print on demand shop that supports using SVG graphics, you can export this as an SVG and then have one file. You can resize it to whatever size you need within their listing creator and not worry about the quality. So let's take a look at a template where maybe there's a little bit more advanced options on the text. Here's a great one. This is a logo template. Let's click on use this design. We'll get into this one. All right, so with this one, this is a great example of a graphic that illustrates just how much detail you can add with their text. And so let's focus in on that for a moment. If we select the text option, this has the rise transformation applied, which you can edit to go in any direction you want. We can change it to a simple straight angle if we don't want it to have the rise. Now let's click on the text effects tab over on the right. The options you have here are much more detailed than what some other tools offer in terms of the different types of shadows and decoration that you can add. So this one already has a shadow applied with a specific color. We can change the offset. We can change the angle. We can add, uh, this shadow has a stroke feature also. If we go back to the one that was selected, we can also add a decoration to the text. So we can add stripes. We can add sort of a color cut. We can add, horizontal stripes, we can add this sort of fade. And then to remove it, we just click on it again and it takes it right off of there if you decide you don't wanna go with that. So there are just a lot of options that they give you to edit text. Let's go back and just take a quick look at the fonts they offer because they offer a pretty big catalog of fonts. And another really cool feature of Kittle is that you can upload your own fonts. If you have paid for specific fonts for commercial use that you like to use, you can actually upload your own fonts with this little uh, cloud upload button in the top right corner of the font list. Now let's take a quick look at how I made this design from scratch using the available elements. First, we would just click on new project. Instead of selecting a template, that'll bring us to a brand new artboard. We will first resize, and then we will change the background color to black. You can always hide the background, or you can change it to a different color, whatever helps you see the design best that you're working on, just like you can in any other software. 
And you do that by expanding the layers option that is completely behind my head right now in the bottom right corner. There's a little layers menu that allows you to hide or rearrange the different layers, just like in Photoshop. So first let's find the elements that we want to use. I'm going to start with those crossbones. And to find those, I'm going to come back over to the left side here where our elements are. We're going to click on that and we're just going to search bones. So I'm going to scroll until I find what I want here. So here's those crossbones that I liked. I'm going to change this object color. Now let's find the banner that we used. All right, here's a banner that I like, but the arch is going up and I want it going down. So let's just right click on it and do flip vertical to get it facing the other way. That's looking pretty good. Now let's place the skull. Now this one's actually in two pieces. I actually did this one with just this top and this bottom part of the skull. So we need to resize these and we also are gonna have to rearrange the order of the layers. Now we just have to move this behind the banner so that it's a little bit hidden. Just come over to the right bottom corner where your layers menu is and then find your banner and drag that above. There we go. I think that looks just about perfect. And now we just need to add some text. So come back over to the left menu, select text, and then we're gonna do add headline here. There we go. We'll stretch that out so that it fits lengthwise. Now it's time to change our text effect. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to apply an arch to it, and then we are going to use this slider to change it so that it curves up instead of down. And I'm actually gonna change this font as well. So let's go here and select Brookfield might be the one I want. Now I'm gonna go Go to the text effects and I'm going to add the effect that I wanted here. So I'm just going to change my shadow. That's pretty much the look I was going for. That may not be 100% exactly like the original I showed you that I made a second ago, but that is exactly how I did it. There's a couple little pieces of text that still go on the bottom of this design, but you can see how quickly you can throw together a design and have it looking really professional and something that's not going to look just like any old print on demand design. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that textures are not something that you can currently mask or clip onto individual layers or individual elements within the tool yet. That is a feature that is coming. So let me just show you what that'll look like. If you come down on the left menu to the textures option, there are a lot of grunge textures, paper textures, pattern textures that you can apply. So let's apply a grunge texture here. There we go. So now we have a texture and that looks great, but it is applied to the entire layer over everything, unfortunately. So what that means is when we do get rid of the background, that texture, that grunge effect is going to be visible. So once they have the feature enabled where you can apply this texture as a clipping mask to the layers beneath it or to an individual element, you will be able to export your design with the texture only applied to the design and still have the transparent background. But for now, we would have to disable or hide this texture layer before we export the file to get the transparent background. Now, I know I just scratched the surface of what all of the features and functionality is of the Kittle design interface, but I do want to take a moment and talk about the subscription plans as well as the licensing. So they do have a free account, which enables you to get in and you can download an unlimited number of low resolution images. You can work on 10 projects at one time and you can delete projects if you decide you're done with one and want to start a new one. You do have a commercial license, but it requires attribution. Now the pro account costs $15 if you pay monthly or $10 a month if you pay annually. So that's $120 a year. And this unlocks all of the features. You have unlimited vector exports. So you can export your files as SVGs as well as the regular types. You can work on up to 50 projects at one time and you get one gigabyte of upload space, including custom font uploads. You also get the full commercial license with no attribution required. Now the export license steps that up and costs $30 a month if you pay monthly or $24 a month, $288 a year if you pay annually. And that gives you access to premium templates that are only available to the expert level subscription, an unlimited number of projects that you can work on, 10 gigabytes of upload space, and the same full commercial license. Now let's talk about that commercial license from Kittle, what you can do with the graphics you download and what you cannot do. Let's start with what you cannot do. So you can't redistribute, sublicense, or share the source files. You cannot make your designs available for download on other platforms than Kittle. You can't resell your designs as stock material. So the prohibited use pretty much aligns with a lot of other platforms like Canva as far as what you can and cannot do with their graphics. However, if we move over to what you can do, you can use the designs for personal, commercial, or commissioned projects. You can use them on physical physical end products for sale, and that's where it applies to us as print-on-demand sellers. So with this license, you've got everything you need to create designs for print-on-demand purposes.
So what do you all think? I want to know in the comments if you think that Kittle is a contender for a top print-on-demand graphic design tool or service. I think this certainly looks promising, especially with how much customizing you can do of all of these templates. In my opinion, a lot of these templates simply look better and more professional than some other sources of graphics out there. And I will be creating some more videos over the next couple of months and go into some more detail about some of the features and using some of these templates for creating different designs for some different niches. But I wanted to put this out there and share my opinion that I think this is a really interesting tool uh, that is worth your consideration if you're looking for a graphic service for your print-on-demand business. So again, let me know in the comments what you think. There's no harm in signing up for the free account and checking it out and seeing if this works for you. There, of course, is a link in the description to Kittle, so you can go check it out for yourself and let me know what you think. If you found this information helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button so YouTube can show this information to more people and subscribe to the POD Insights channel and click that notification bell so you can get notified when I release more videos about using Kittle for print-on-demand designs. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>